On July 3, 2010, Lyle and Marie McCann left St. Albert, Alberta for a trip to Chilliwack in southern British Columbia in their Class A motorhome. Lyle and Marie were 78 and 77 years old, respectively, at the time of their disappearance. They were never seen again. This is their story. Minnow Lake, where their motorhome was engulfed in flames and their SUV went missing. It was two days after they left St. Albert for a road trip to BC on the first weekend in July. This man who is asking for anonymity says he was there at Minnow Lake. He is speaking publicly for the first time. He claims he saw a lot that weekend while camping, including watching the couple's motorhome pull in around supper time July 4th. I didn't see elderly people in there. They looked pretty young to me. Like they looked to be in their 40s, late 30s, early 40s. He says the driver made no attempt to ensure the motorhome was sitting on stable ground. He says there was a second person as well. In the evening of July 5th, 2010, firefighters responded to a motorhome on fire at the campground near Edson, Alberta. Police discovered a motorhome belonging to the McCann family and their Hyundai Tucson tow vehicle was also missing. When the McCanns did not arrive at Abbotsford International Airport later that month at July 10th, their daughter, Trudy Holder, notified the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Soon after, a connection was made between the burned out motorhome and the McCann's disappearance. A massive aerial and ground search led to the discovery of their missing SUV later in July, about 20 miles east of where the burned out remains of their RV was found. What has made this story especially troubling is that RV travel in Canada is extremely free from violent crime, and never before has two RVers, who both were senior citizens, disappeared in such a fashion. The story has and remains a rare but troubling event in Western Canada for the RV community. On July 19, 2010, a man named Travis Vader was arrested elsewhere in Alberta on outstanding warrants unrelated to the disappearance of the McCanns. In late August 2010, Mr. Vader was described as a person of interest by the RCMP while Vader remained in jail on unrelated matters. On July 27, 2011, a court issued an order declaring Lyle and Marie McCann to be deceased as no evidence was present that they lived beyond the last day they were ever seen. Travis Vader continued to be denied bail on other unrelated matters and remained in custody. On April 23, 2012, Vader was officially charged with two counts of first-degree murder in the deaths of the McCanns, and the whereabouts of their bodies has remained unknown. Travis Vader, where are the bodies of my parents? Vader has shown no sign of acknowledging that he even caused the death of my parents. He shows no remorse for what he has done. I want Vader to know that our family will be is at this and any future hearings and we will demand to know where he put the bodies of my parents. To the horror of many, on October 8, 2014, Vader was found not guilty of nine charges unrelated to the disappearance of the McCanns and was released from custody shortly thereafter. Thankfully, two months later in December 2014, Vader was again arrested for the deaths of the McCanns and remained in custody to await trial. At the conclusion of the trial on September 15, 2016, Travis Vader was found guilty of second-degree murder with an eligibility of parole between 10 and 25 years. The verdict attracted controversy from legal experts who claimed that it relied on a law that had been previously ruled unconstitutional. Due to this error in law, on October 31, 2016, Justice Thomas reversed the original conviction and Vader was convicted of manslaughter. Following his sentencing, on January 25, 2017, Vader was sentenced to life with the eligibility of parole after seven years for the conviction of manslaughter. A, a mistake occurred, and as I indicated uh, er, earlier, uh, uh, mistakes do occur, and uh, um, uh, many cases are uh, 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 overturned on appeal. And uh, here we have a situation where a mistake occurred. Uh, the, the, the mistake in the Crown submission was addressed uh, today, and. Uh, um, as a result, we have uh, uh, two convictions for manslaughter, uh, uh, which, uh, according to Justice Thomas, is what would have occurred on September 15 had 
the error in relation to Section 230 not occurred. His conviction was the result of forensic evidence found linking Vader to the crime scenes. We will never forget and I will never forgive what Travis Vader has done. The National Parole Board of Canada says Vader has been eligible for day parole since September 13, 2019 and for full parole on March 13, 2020. He will soon walk among us to kill again. If he, if he were to stand up and say what happened to my parents, then I, I could say that I could forgive him.